porn addicts, opioid babies. I mean, again, alarm, blame, shame over and over again. So what policies and laws would you expect to coincide with this kind of reporting? You get exactly what you could predict. You find that there are prosecutions of pregnant women and new mothers. You get expansion of state child welfare laws to reach women in relationship to the eggs, embryos, and fetuses they carry. You get expansion of civil commitment laws uh, to lock up pregnant women. Uh, in Wisconsin, which I'll be talking about, you get a particular like hybrid of all of those laws. In 2003, there's an amendment to the Federal Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act that is very confusing to most people, but it encourages states. The states have to say there's a mechanism for connecting newborns who either are drug affected, not defined, or in withdrawal, which can also be from method of buprenorphine treatment to child welfare. You get some modest funding increases, but very little uh, permanent for treatment. Um, and you get the creation of um, uh, CRAC, Children Required to Care in Community, a private program uh, that offers with $300 to get sterilized or use long acting. So the policies that resulted focused on reporting, on punishment, on surveillance, despite peer reviewed evidence based on. Uh, and medical and public health consensus that these approaches are bad for maternal, fetal, and child health. And yet we come back to them. And they're bad because if you fear that by speaking honestly to your doctor, you will uh, lose custody of your child, be arrested, you're not going to do it. Now the truth is, a lot of the times we are articulate this as a deterrent effect. If you're afraid you're going to be arrested, you're not going to go. That is true for some women. We definitely have cases of women giving birth at home, not because they want a home birth, but because they're afraid. Have women giving birth in cars on the way from Tennessee to North Carolina because they don't want to give birth in Tennessee where they could get arrested. But the truth is that most women go anyway because they care so much about their babies. And they will, they will confess because they care so much about their babies. It is bad not only because it deters some women, but because it puts our resources into punishment instead of care, because it, it recycles, recreates, reinforces the narrative of individual blame, uh, and because it adds to a country in which we have mass incarceration and mass criminalization. Um, oh, I know why this is it. These punitive policies uh, are there in spite of the fact that all of these organizations not the least of which is the National Perinatal Association, say do not do this. Do not respond to issues of drug use and pregnancy through creation of criminal laws. And the interesting thing about that is that that has had some success. That until 2014, not a single state legislature actually passed a law saying we can arrest women in relationship to their pregnancies and to their drug use. Not until 2014. And that's partly because medical organizations and doctors in each of these states, doctors who maybe play golf with the state legislators, who bother to testify, say don't do that. But what we saw instead is individual prosecutors, uh, nevertheless, even without state authority to do it, trying out various theories of, so they could arrest women in relationship to their pregnancy. So if the law in the state said child endangerment is a crime, a woman who gave birth to a baby, healthy or not, charged with child endangerment. Because child endangerment is a crime that's just risk of harm. You endanger your child by leaving at home alone, you endanger your child by using cocaine. Most of the time we were able to get the courts to say, no, 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 no. The legislature decides if something's a crime, not you, the individual prosecutor, and you can't use me, court, to create a new law. It probably won't surprise you that since 2005, it appears that the number of arrests uh, and the rate per year has gone up significantly. And some of that is the result of the newest wave of panic around opioids, uh, and I think it's other factors as well. So we think that there have been more than 700 arrests since 2005, probably a lot more than that. Uh, and they apply not only in the context of drug use, but HIV. Once you open that door, which is what I'm going to explain next, 
if you can arrest, if you can punish based on drug use and pregnancy, what really is the theory behind that? Since all, many things are far more risky than using marijuana while you're pregnant, for example, um, the principle isn't drugs. The principle is controlling pregnant women. how the law works. So you arrest, you, uh, arrest Cornelia Whitner in South Carolina uh, for child endangerment. She gives birth to a healthy baby that tests positive, who tests positive for cocaine. Uh, she's not well represented at trial. She pleads guilty. She begs for treatment and the judge says, no, I think I'll just send you to jail for 10 years. When we appealed, uh, which we've done in many other states, we lost and the court said, uh, we don't have to address all the other ways in which this law could be used. In this case, we're only looking at cocaine uh, and we're, we're, we don't have to consider what the later down the road implications are. But the decision also said that viable fetuses in South Carolina are persons and as a result, the state's criminal child endangerment statute applies to pregnant women who use an illicit drug or engage in any other behavior that might endanger the fetus. Now, I just want to explain something. Pregnancy endangers the fetus. <laughs> Come on, 15 to 25 percent of all pregnancies end in miscarriages and stillbirths. You allow that sperm in, you get fertilizing, you are endangering an unborn life. That is the nature of pregnancy, that is biology. And we have not responded to the overall claim so that more and more laws are being passed on this idea of fetal personhood and maternal liability and responsibility. Pregnancy is child endangerment. Let's just accept that and work from it because that is what survival of the species is about. It is what biology is about. And it's true, we could have uh, women as a second uh, class status who, because they are biologically programmed to uh, become pregnant and thus necessarily endanger unborn life, we can just keep them in a separate category of persons subject to an entirely different set of state laws and controls. Now, I want to acknowledge that punitive laws are always applied in this country uh, disproportionately to low-income people, and especially black and brown people, but there are an awful lot of rural white women who are affected, and all women are affected by an ideology that defames and blames them. So Cornelia Whitner is convicted and goes to jail for 10 years. Melissa Crawley is taken back into custody uh, on a similar charge, even though she's managed to become abstinent, is home taking care of her children, uh, but she has to go back to jail too. Then you get an arrest in South Carolina for a woman who tested positive for marijuana. And then you get an arrest for a woman who used alcohol while she was pregnant. Uh, then a woman who experiences a stillbirth uh, is charged and convicted of homicide by child abuse based on a positive cocaine test. Cocaine does not cause stillbirths. If any of the criminalized drugs were good at causing pregnancy losses, I think a lot more women would be using them in a country where they can't access abortion. She had an infection. Uh, she was in mourning. Her mother had died, been run over by a truck recently, by a drunk driver. And by the way, he was not arrested. Uh, and the decision, which we did ultimately get her conviction overturned after she served eight years, but it said a ruling that a pregnant woman who unintentionally, unintentionally heightens the risk of stillbirth can be found guilty of depraved heart homicide. And then it's applied to Jessica Clyburn. She's 18. She has a history of mental health issues. She's pregnant. Uh, she's distraught about her boyfriend. And she attempts suicide by jumping out of a building. She, her landing is softened by a bombing. Um, her pelvis is broken, all sorts of bones are broken. She loses her pregnancy, she's eight months pregnant, and she's arrested on charges of homicide by child abuse. Um, and so you then, we then got an email at, uh, from a midwife in South Carolina saying, I have a, a client who has a baby who's in a breech position. We just talked to the OBGYN and he said, I can't arrest you if you don't have cesarean surgery, but if you give birth and something goes wrong, I can, and you can be arrested in South Carolina. We have more than 20 states. This map is in the process of being updated, in which evidence of drug use, 20 states, 
uh, say it is child abuse by definition, and other states say it must be reported, and other states say that um, uh, uh, even in the states where it doesn't have to be reported, and I'm going to bring this to your attention. Our current president has stated that he's seriously thinking about the death penalty for drug dealers. He's a great admirer of Duterte in the Philippines and the death penalty in, um, in Singapore. And you know why? You all, and you should be concerned about this anyway, uh, for anybody. Drug dealers, by the way, aren't all Noriega. Very often, drug dealing and drug delivery is just you have a lot of drugs on you, so it must mean you're a dealer. But if you have a high tolerance for drugs, you're going to have a lot on you. But among the crimes that pregnant women have been charged with, uh, and most of the women in our study were charged with some kind of crime related to the use of a criminalized drug, but uh, is drug distribution and drug delivery. So among those who he could be reaching, at, reaching towards for the death penalty for drug delivery are women like these who've been arrested on theories of drug delivery to a minor through the umbilical cord. And I assure you, in this country with lack of compassion, you open the door for some other group of people, you think, well, they're not me, they're not my issue. Just understand precedent. The next group is the group you are in or care about. The Bighorn County prosecutor issued a statement recently saying that pregnant women who use alcohol or drugs, not even addicted, uh, should turn themselves in, and their neighbors, and their friends, and their doctors should turn themselves in. Uh, otherwise, he's going to have civil commitment or some kind of civil commitment proceeding, and if they don't obey, uh, they have choice activists are signing that decision to say, look, if you can put women in jail for smoking marijuana, we certainly should be able to put them in jail for having abortion. So if you, whatever your opinion is about abortion, and I respect that, understand, however, that we are talking about what we're fighting is mass criminalization of uh, pregnant women. Six million women get pregnant every year. Uh, among those are people who define themselves as men, and I include those uh, in, in this group. Uh, and, what we're tr and it's not true that every one of those women will be at risk. Whiteness, economic privilege, other protections will, will uh, help. But all of those, a very large number of those, could become the subjects of mass incarceration.